Hey everyone, this is Rachel and I am super excited to share that I'm going to be joining in a bunch of other awesome crafty YouTube people and for the reboot of the For the Love of Homemade Kits series. This is a series started back a couple years ago by Christina Sorge and Hannah Lemieux and a bunch of other ladies joined in and they decided to reboot it. And so I asked if I could join in and they were like, oh, of course you can. So I am super duper excited. Here is the PDF I printed out with the recipe for January. It is available on Christina's blog as well as on her YouTube, not YouTube, um, Facebook page. So I will link that down below. So if you want to join in, just uh, make sure you tag one of the ladies or me in your layout or your kit picture or video. And so we can come check it out. All right. So this is the kit, uh, the paper for the kit I put together. I tried to follow it. I didn't go too extra, <laughs> but I added a couple of things other than what's simply listed here. So I'm gonna put this to the side and then just go through it. First, we have a wood grain or a nature themed paper. Oh, so I should tell you where I get my paper from when I'm making kits. So uh, for those of you who are watchers of mine, you know I often make page kits where I'll make enough, I'll make a kit just enough to do one layout. And when I do page kits, I tend to stick with one collection because for me, that's the easiest way just to make sure everything goes together. When I'm making a kit like this, where it's meant to be able to make several layouts, I don't normally do that. What I have is a bag of paper that I call my grab bag uh, bag, <laughs> my grab bag bag are my one-off papers. So basically they're papers I got in grab bags, they're papers I got uh, from Studio Calico, which I didn't think were matched well uh, as a kit. And I pick from there to make my kits up. And I just find, I can usually find a lot of things that actually work quite well together. So all of the papers from my, for my kit are from that bag of one-offs. So I was super excited that I found a bunch of things I really liked that went well together. So this first one is a Studio Calico. It is from 2015 and it has this really dark wood grain then with this hot pink overlay on the bottom. So I might use the full thing. I might just use the natural wood grain. We shall see. Now the B side of this is white and hot pink hearts. I don't know if I'll use this or not. We shall see. The next piece of paper is from Seven Paper, which is an offshoot of Studio Calico. Um, this is from their Goldie collection. This is for the stripes pattern from the paper listing. And it's not like your, like your normal stripe paper, but I really liked it. Uh, there is a black and white paper element in our paper kit, so I thought this would go quite well. And I liked the more uh, natural rather than the straight stripes. The B-side happens to be black and white hearts, so it could be used as well as part of my paper listing. Now for floral, I did pick two different florals just because I couldn't decide. They are quite different. This is from Hip Kit, uh, their Harvest Dreams kit. It's called Warm and Fuzzy. I got this in a Hip Kit grab bag and it has a grid over which there are very botanical, loosely drawn flowers in a single color. The B side is this super bold plaid. I will most likely not be using this side. Never say never, but most likely I will be using this side. And then the other floral I had to choose was this really whimsical multicolored one from Dear Lizzie from her Stay Colorful line. This is, I think this is newer. I got this in a grab bag, so I really don't have anything else from Stay Colorful except this piece of paper and one other piece of paper. Now the B side of this is actually a tone on tone in aqua and dark aqua. So that also works as uh, colored mostly one tone is also on my list. 
Now, however, this is the paper I actually picked to be my tone-on-tone uh, -tone sheet of paper. It is from Pebbles Seen and Noted. That is actually the B-side. The multicolor banners are the A-side. And then my final piece of paper is the black and white, and I chose this one from Studio Calico, and it's from 2014. And it just has brush script months all over it in black and white. And then the B-side is this really bright orange tone on tone, which I'm probably not gonna use because I actually don't even like it. So there's that. Now, for mixed media, we were supposed to pick an unfinished mixed media background that you had previously started or purchased. So I actually picked two. This one I actually made for a challenge on the Secret Not Secret Kit Club Facebook page for just creating a mixed media background to use later. I used my Distress Inks and uh, my Distress Oxide Inks and some Tim Holtz mini stencils that I stretched out. I didn't know really what I was going to do with it, but I liked how the colors match a lot of the really springy colors in my papers. So I thought I would just pull this in. And then the other one I did was this one. This is a gesso piece of paper that I used a bunch of my shimmers on. Once again, I wasn't necessarily, um, I didn't have a project in mind when I did this. I was just trying to see how these colors worked together. So it's different shades of pink with a couple of magentas in as well. So those are all of my papers. Now, for me, when I'm making a kit like this, especially if the idea is to um, very regimentally make videos, I like to go ahead and pick out the photos I'm going to use. This does two things for me. It's an impetus to actually complete the layout because I already have a photo, I already have all the kit put together. So really it's only an hour of my time because that's how long it normally takes me to make a layout once I have everything picked out. The second thing that helps is when I'm picking out my embellishments, I have an idea of the types of things to pick. So I don't have to bring in a huge amount of things because I know what it is I'm looking at. So I've picked out four sets of photos. I have this one photo of my dog. I have these two photos of um, a group of ladies who I'm friends with at a crop. And then I have these, um, well, I'll do this one first because it makes more sense. This is me as a small child. And then I have this set. So it's actually four photos. These are just uh, very small photos that I need to cut apart. And this is when we went for ice cream on National Ice Cream Day last, I want to say it was last summer, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to look up the date. I have it on Instagram. Um, so these are the photos I'm going to be using. So I know what type of embellishments I can look for when I start looking at my embellishments. So the first thing on the embellishments list was ribbon. Ribbon is not something I own a lot of. I do, however, have this uh, leafy trim. This was actually from a kit that Christina made for me for the Secret Not Secret Kit Club. Um, and my cat Xanthi fell in love with it, so I hid it. But by hiding it from Xanthi, I also hid it from myself. So I had actually forgotten about it uh, until I went to go clean. And if, like, if you could see Xanthi and how much she's paying attention to me right now, it is quite hilarious. So I'm actually going to take this and put it in my pocket because she will go after it very sneakily and very quietly. Oh, sorry about that. I got a phone call and I film on my phone. So I had to take a little pause. All right, next up on the embellishment list is something dimensional. When I hear the words something dimensional, my first thought is acrylic. So I pulled out a couple pieces of acrylic. I pulled out this love word. I'm pretty sure that is from Bella Boulevard. Then from Color Cast Designs, I pulled out this aqua, You Are My Sunshine. Yeah, it just broke. I'm like, wait, does that actually say that? It does. And then also I pulled out the words, you are my sunshine from Ellie Studio. Uh, my thinking was to use that for my photo of Miss Sadie and have that be my title. So as I said, this is the reason I end up picking my photos out when I'm making a big kit because I find it helps me make embellishment choices. 
So there is that. And the next thing up was Project Life Card or a larger die cut. So I just picked a couple of Project Life style cards that had the similar colorings. Um, I had a couple of journaling cards and then this one that I could definitely use um, to cut apart for journaling as well. So I don't have a lot of Project Life cards, so I just thought I would go simple and useful. All right, next up was something with glitter. As I was actually looking for um, Project Life cards, these glittery stars that are chipboard, there's a white glitter, a silver glitter, and a gold glitter. Uh, they were on uh, top of another little plastic box that I keep my general embellishments in. And I was like, oh, those would be perfect. And, um, oh, which reminds me, I didn't finish my mixed media. The second thing in mixed media was chunky glitter or foil flakes. Um, I have these leftover like little silver stars and then iridescent uh, flakes uh, from the color pour line from American Crafts, uh, from all of the paint pouring that was super duper popular for about five minutes. I did a couple, I had fun with it, and um, I had a whole bunch of glitter stuff left over. So I think I should be able to use that maybe with my mixed media background. I think that might look really, really cool along with these silver stars. So that's what I am thinking for that. So there we go for my something with glitter and then my second mixed media thing. And the next on the embellishment list is flare badges or epoxy flare. I love flare. So I have a whole plastic container of flare. It's not huge, it's four by six. It's one of those little iris containers. So what I picked out was this love with a paw and then this little schnauzer head. And those either of those could be used on the layout for my dog. And then I also picked out this little mini flare that says yummy. And I thought that might be good for the ice cream, uh, National Ice Cream Day ice cream thing. All right, and my last embellishment is a sticker sheet. And what I ended up going with was this black and white sticker sheet from Bella Boulevard from their Color Chaos line. So these are a lot of journaling stickers. I thought since I've got the papers that are black and white and bright colors, these would work well. I was also thinking of using this sticker in the layout I have a, with a picture of myself as a small child. And this is just an idea. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm absolutely going to do it, but I was thinking doing like a, you know, what I wish I could tell myself as a child that I wish I knew now, like what I know now, what I wish I could tell myself as a child, you know, to make my life a little easier type thing. So those are my embellishments. And then the last thing on my list is the alphas. So I did add a little bit more in the alpha section than is listed. In here we have an alphabet that matches one of the pattern papers and then also an alphabet from the same collection as one of the elements in the kit. Now because I chose a lot of one-offs and things like that, I don't necessarily have um, a lot of papers that come with collections. Um, in fact, the only one I had was the Pebbles one, and that is a really old one, and I actually didn't own anything else in it. So what I did instead was choose another Pebbles line. Um, this is, this came out with one of their baby lines, and it is called Maggie, and it is an ombre aqua, and I thought that would go well. And then um, I did pick a Dear Lizzie collection as well. This is not Stay Colorful as I have in my um, paper collection. I don't actually remember which one it came out with, but it is called Petals and it is black and white. So like we have the black and white elements. And then I did choose a third one 
and that is a flat sticker 12 by 12 by Simple Stories called Sunshine and Happiness. And I just like the way the colors went. And I thought, um, especially with that Dear Lizzie paper, just these went so, so well color wise that I couldn't not add it. So here is my entire kit. I'll lay it out for you very prettily and then come back. All right, so here is my January 2020 For the Love of Homemade Kits. Homemade Kits. <laughs> Please make sure you head on down into the description box uh, to check out all the other ladies who are joining in for January 2020. I think the idea is that uh, you can join in every month or you can just pick and choose months that are going to work for you. So as always, this is, you know, what works best for you and your schedule and your ability to scrapbook at the time because everyone's different. Um, I don't scrapbook a lot in the summertime because I'm busy doing things. It is now January and it's cold outside, so I don't normally go outside. <laughs> so if you have any questions or whatsoever, if you could drop a comment down below, that would be super awesome. If you work with a kit or make a kit or anything like that, make sure you link us up so we can watch and say how awesome you are. And uh, if you could flick me a thumbs up, that would also not to overuse a word or anything, but be <gasps> amazing. All right, everyone, good night. Thank you so much for joining me here and bye.